Well, in this textbook, solving right triangles means we know all six things about it. We've got three sides and three angles. And in this case, that means we need to find one, two sides, and we have to find one angle. Let's get to it. This one's a little easier than the next one because we're given an angle. When we're given an angle, we'll just take its complement and we have the other angle, one third of the way there. Now it's time to solve for the two sides. This is trig time. And you see what we've got right here. We've got, a, we're going to go back. Always use your given angle. Don't use the 33 because you calculated that. Use your given angle at 57 and use this side of 15. Let's label the sides just really quick, review. With respect to this angle, this is going to be the opposite. The T will be the adjacent and the S will be the hypotenuse. So let's set up some trig. From 57, the opposite over hypotenuse, that's the sine. 15 over S is sine 57. Let's rearrange that. There you go. 15 divided by the sine of 57. Do I still have to show you on the calculator? Well, we'll do it just for fun. Here we go. 15. We'll be fast. Divided by 57. We're in degrees. Oh, careful. Make sure you hit the sine. That looks good. And there you go. 17.9 to the nearest tenth. And we put that down there. And let's see. Yeah, that's what I meant. Right there. Now, let's go back and find the missing side. You could, I know you're tempted to say, let's just do the Pythagorean theorem with these two sides. You could, but I advise against it because this is a calculated side. Always go to your givens. That means trig again. And that's easy enough. It's actually faster than the Pythagorean theorem. Let's just take the tangent of 57, the opposite over the adjacent. 15 over t. Got it right here. Rearrange as we've done before. 15 divided by the tangent of 57. Pull out your handy dandy calculator. Clear it off. Make sure you're in degrees. Always check that. 15 divided by, there's my 57. That's the tangent of 57. I'm still recognizing division equals 9.7 degrees. No, sorry, 9.7 units. A length is 9.7. And we're done. So solving this triangle, DEF, means we're going to solve for the missing side D and the two acute angles at D and F, respectively. We'll start at the easiest place, most logical. We'll use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of D eight and a half. Um, this would have been a good candidate for the reduced triangle principle if we were solving in radical form, but your author specifically asked for decimals. Whew, made it easy. So let's move on from here. It's trig time. Let's start with angle D. Now, nine is going to be the hypotenuse regardless, but with respect to D, this is three is going to be the adjacent so that's the adjacent side, adjacent over hypotenuse. That is certainly cosine. So let's write our cosine function out there. And it would look um, something like this. Measure of angle D is the cosine, the adjacent over hypotenuse. I should say the inverse of that. So now we'll take our numbers, three and nine, or as you see here, a little simplified, the one and the three. So we'll take one third. Pull out your handy dandy calculator. There's one third, one divided by three, one third. And we're getting good at this. We've got the inverse button. We're going to take the inverse cosine. And you can see that 70.5287, etc. You can you could write those digits down and it would look like that. But really, to the nearest tenth. That's what you've got. Now at this point, you might be tempted just to take the complement of 70 and a half. And that's okay. That Technically that's correct, but I think that's a mistake. You should always go back to your original. Remember, you're good engineers here. 
go back to your original givens, your 3 and your 9. Now, from angle F, this is no longer the adjacent side. The 3 is now the opposite side. So we're going to pretend we don't even know about this 70 and a half degrees over here. And we're going to use, in this sign, in this case, opposite over hypotenuse, and that will be the sine function. Let's see, where are, where are we over here? Oh yeah, the sine of, or let's say the inverse sine of 3 over 9 is the measure of angle F. Just like last time, I'll take the numbers 1 and 3. So I'm going to take 1 third, pull out my calculator, still got that old answer in it. I'll take 1 divided by 3. So again, 1 third, that's the decimal equivalent. And here we go with the inverse sign. 19.4712, etc. And I'll write all that down. And you see when we round to the nearest tenth, there we go. And one little check we can perform. I'm looking at these two numbers. And they do add up to 90 because those two angles are complementary.